I'm Harrison Graham, and today's Chiefs Report is presented by Manscaped. Get the best men's grooming products on the planet with Manscaped. Manscaped.com, promo code CHIEFS. That's going to get you 20% off. Check out their new products, too, including the Beard Hedger. We'll talk a little bit more about this product later on in the show. All right, we got some breaking news to get to as uh, the Chiefs have made a re-signing in NFL free agency. It is Derek Nadi. Ari Marov has the note here that uh, his agency, uh, Sports Trust, has uh, announced that that uh, Nadi is re-signing with the Chiefs. Uh, he started all 20 games last year. Veteran player who's played a lot. He returns for a sixth season in Kansas City. Contract details to de be determined here, so uh, keep an eye on that. I believe he signed a one-year vet minimum deal to return last year after his rookie contract ran out, so I would assume something similar. You know, Nick Allegretti's contract details came in, and it was one-year, $2.58 million. Could be the same for Derek Nottie, some, something like that. So uh, don't expect it to be a big contract. And I like bringing him back. Um, Derek Nottie is a guy that Spags knows. He's a guy that knows this defense. He's not great, but he's solid. He's serviceable. He can start. He can be a backup. He plays that one-tech role just fine. He's not going to fill up the stat sheet, but that's not really his role. Uh, he is a guy that knows his role and can free up guys like Chris Jones to go make the splashy plays. What is your one word reaction to Derek Nadi re-signing with the Kansas City Chiefs? Let me know down in the comments your one word reaction to Nadi returning to Kansas City. My one word reaction is simply needed. You needed Derek Nadi to return in my opinion because when you lost Kalen Saunders to the Saints on a three year deal, uh, you couldn't really afford to lose both. Now maybe you upgrade at that spot in the draft or something like that uh, and Nadi becomes more of a depth player, but you needed to bring him back. Tershawn Wharton's back as well and he can kind of slide back being that rotation defensive tackle slash defensive end, so I think that's good as well. Obviously the addition of Charles and Menehue, uh at edge, I still think getting a couple more pieces on this defensive of line is going to make some sense, but uh, bringing back guys for cheap that know their roles I think is important. It's like I talked about with the Allegretti deal. That's a valuable signing because he's cheap and he can play guard or center as a backup if he needs to step in. Now, again, I've said Nottie's, you know, his game is not to fill up the stat sheet. He's a nose tackle, right? He's going to take on blockers, try to stuff some running lanes and, you know, stop the run a bit and ultimately free up linebackers and Chris Jones uh, uh, to make more of the splashy plays. But he's been reliable. He's been able to stay healthy for the most part. Uh, with Kalen Saunders' exit, like I mentioned, uh, Derek Nottie being back in the fold I think is really important, uh, and I'm a fan of the move. Uh, are, are there better nose tackles out there like Puna Ford? Yes, but they're probably going to cost you a little bit more. And um, you know what you have in Derek Nottie. I think sometimes teams overthink. They're like, oh, we can upgrade here. We can upgrade here. Bring back the guy you know, especially if it's cost effective. And I fully expect that to be the case with this contract, even though we don't have the exact details at this point. Like Derek Nottie's return, I think it's a good move by Brett Beach. Uh, what's also a good move, if not a great move, that is getting going with Manscaped, especially with the Beard Hedger Pro kit. This thing is absolutely fantastic. Manscaped for years has been the uh, industry leader in below the waist grooming. They've traveled north with the beard hedger and they're going to keep things tr trimmed up just like they have with me uh, with my beard. Love their grooming products with the beard hedger. It comes with obviously the hedger itself but tons of other products as well. You get the beard shampoo and conditioner. You can treat your beard like you treat your pubes in that regard. Also it comes with beard oil. You get beard balm as well and they throw in a beard comb, a beard brush, uh, and beard scissors in this pack as well. Use code CHIEFS to get 20% off plus free shipping. My favorite part about the Beard Hedger, goodbye to multiple guards. You don't have to fill up your drawer with all these extra guards. It's on a 20 rotary uh, guard there. You just rotate it to whatever length you want. You trim it down. You are good to go. I highly recommend the Beard Hedger. I'm due for a trim very soon. Going to go home sometime uh, in the near future. Get a trim with the Beard Hedger, and uh, it's not going to fill up uh, my drawers at my house either. Promo code Chiefs, manscaped.com, get 20% off. Check out the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Link is in the comments and in the description of this video. All right, I know we've talked about DeAndre Hopkins a lot, but when there's new information out there, we got to talk about it here on the Chiefs Report. Report has dropped uh, that DeAndre Hopkins' trade market is gaining steam. Will the Chiefs be involved? That's a question uh, to be determined. We haven't 
specifically heard that today, but I do think they're likely in on DeAndre Hopkins because they need a wide receiver. Ian Rappaport with the report earlier today, the status of Cardinals star wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins uh, comes into focus. Talks are ramping up among the interested teams. Sources say, similar to Brandon Cooks, a trade would likely mean an altered contract, and that could be a good thing as well. Brandon Cooks ended up restructuring, kind of redoing his deal with the Dallas Cowboys. I think it was two years, $20 million. Uh, imagine if you could get DeAndre Hopkins not commit to an extension, and even lower his current contract. I mean, that would be huge for Brett Veach in Kansas City. It feels like Hopkins could be the next domino to drop, uh, especially among the wide receivers. You know, it was slow starting in free agency. Then we saw Jacoby Myers uh, get signed. We saw Juju go and a few others, Paris Campbell and so forth. Then Brandon Cooks got traded. Now it feels like Hopkins is the next domino. That's that's how it feels, and uh, I think it makes sense because teams want to know where they stand before the NFL draft at the wide receiver position. I think Kansas City, more than anyone, uh, if they don't end up getting DeAndre Hopkins, well, maybe the draft comes more into focus for wide receiver, or maybe they pivot to Odell Beckham Jr., a player we've talked about quite a bit. Obviously, with Hopkins, the past couple of years, he's had various reasons for absences. He had a suspension last year. He was banged up at times in 2021, but this is a terrific player. Uh, who would be easily the second best receiver Patrick Mahomes has ever played with behind Tyreek Hill. And Hopkins at his peak is right up there with Hill, just a different type of player. Can he get back to full peak form? I think he can get close. He's only 31, uh, but you don't even really need him to be that. Be 90% of your peak, and that's still a number one receiver in the NFL. Should Kansas City trade for Hopkins? What do you guys think? Type T for trade or P for pass? I'd like to see it happen. I don't think it'll cost a ton. Maybe a third-round pick. We'll have to wait and see as things go. T for trade or P for pass? And by the way, the Chiefs want him, at least Chiefs players. Charles and many of you who played with Hopkins in Houston a few years ago said, come on, fam, we're waiting on you. Hashtag Chiefs Kingdom. Uh, Patrick Mahomes liked that tweet. Uh, he also liked Des Bryant's tweet uh, when Des mentioned that the, the Chiefs should go after uh, Hopkins and Odell Beckham Jr. Remember, DeAndre Hopkins also tweeted uh, kind of right after the Super Bowl that, uh, at Patrick Mahomes kind of hinting, hey, man, let's, let's link up. Let's make this happen. And uh, Mahomes uh, interacted with that tweet as well. So I think the Chiefs want them. These players want them. It's just going to come down to trade value and uh, what the contract looks like after they move for him. Now, again, I think you could really benefit from a guy like Hopkins. It takes the pressure off Kadarius Tony. He doesn't need to be a number one right now. Nukes your number one. Tony's your two. MVS, Sky Moore. That's a pretty nice one through four. I would bring back Justin Watson as my five. And then you don't even necessarily have to drive a receiver, draft a receiver at that point in time if you don't want to, uh, if you are Brett Veach and the Chiefs. Chiefs, let's make it happen. If you're Brett Veach and you get DeAndre Hopkins, it might be a wrap. Like, who, who's going to stop this team? I mean, who is going to stop this team uh, if you upgrade from Juju to Hopkins with what was already the best offense in football last year? That would be terrifying for opposing defensive coordinators. So make it happen, Brett Veach. I'm not saying if he doesn't make it happen, it's the end of the world. But I think if you can get it at a reasonable trade value and not have to just uh, have him eat up a ton of cap, I think uh, that's a very enticing move if you're Kansas City. All right, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If the Chiefs trade for Hopkins, we'll have you covered at minimum with the video, uh, hopefully with a live uh, stream breaking it down. So it'll depend on timing, but I promise you this, if they make a move, we will have you covered. Subscribe, turn on your notifications. I'm Harrison Graham. We'll see you soon here on the Chiefs Report.